Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to JSP. This week, we answer some questions. First question, do I think the Vox AC30 CH attenuator is any good? I think it is good. I think it works. It's a reactive attenuator, something that Vox developed, so it works well. I don't I don't think there's a huge difference between the hand-wired and the, the custom series AC30. There are some differences between like the actual controls of the amps, but as far as like an AC30 tone, they both do a Vox AC30. Wonderful. Question two, can you get the Sir Badger 30, which is that guy right there? Can you get it nice and loud and clean? Yes, you can. It is a single channel amp. Um, you can get all those great British tones out of it, but it does clean really well and it does dirt really well, but you can get them really loud in either case. Question three, my orange cabs. What are the current setups? So this top one, this orange, it is a closed back. It's the PPC version. It has um, Celestian Creamback H75s, so it's the heavier magnet. The one below here on the bottom has a Creamback 65M, the M65 speaker, and a V30. I like that combination of both. And actually, my Bogner has the same speaker combination. I have an orange 212 open back that has stock V30s, and I think that's just wonderful. Question four, can you get good tones out of the Orange Rocker 15 at bedroom volumes? Absolutely. You can run that amp at 15 watt, 7.5, and, and then it goes down to like a half a watt or something. If you use the bedroom switch on the back of the amplifier, it takes it down that extra notch, and you can still get great dirty tones and clean tones out of that. I do think that Friedman makes some of the best awesome sounding amps at very low volume, but the Orange Rocker 15 works great as well. Question five. Friedman BE50 Deluxe against the Orange Rockerverb Mark III. Both amps are wonderful. The Rockerverb is two channels, 100 watt. It, it has the whole power scaling thing, so it can get down to 30 watts. It has an attenuator. It has built-in reverb, a good effects loop, multiple outputs, different cabs. And, and the other nice thing about it is on... Channel 2, it has different gain stages. When you cross like the, the barrier from like 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock, you can hear the gain shift, which is awesome because you can get kind of really nice semi-broken tones to monstrous distorted orange tones. And then the Friedman is a three-channel amp. You get your clean, two dirty channels, built-in effects loop. It doesn't have an attenuator. It runs at 50 watts or 25 watts, so you can power scale there. Those are some of the bigger differences, but overall, they're both British-made amps. They're both EL34. They both give you multi-channel switchability. An orange against a Friedman or a Marshall-style UK amp is very different. Again, you've got that, that high mid thing versus the low mid. Together, they're both great amps. I would recommend both of them. It really depends on what kind of player you are. If if you're more in the Marshall camp, go Friedman. If you like low mid, the orange is fun to play with. And I do have a sixth question, but I think I'm going to dedicate a whole whole J speak and it's uh, Telecasters. Um, I've recently gotten really heavy into Telecasters over the last six, eight months, but we will go over that. I, I think for right now, I'll address it with what do I think about the MIM 72 Telecaster? I think it's a good guitar. That and the thin line. I think the thin line worked really well with orange amps, specifically like the OR100 or the OR50. I thought it was superb. That's all the time we got for today. I hope everyone is uh, staying safe out there and not going stir crazy. And uh, we'll see you next week. If you have any questions, please leave them below. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Many more videos to come. Don't miss one sub.